Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Happy Valentine's Day. I thought I'd do a last minute Valentine's card while also showing you how to do a really simple negative painting. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so like I said, today we are gonna be doing a really simple negative painting. So what is a negative painting? Basically, the concept of it is that you are painting around an object to make it pop out rather than painting an object itself. So I haven't done this technique a lot. I don't necessarily love doing it or the way it looks either, but for this pattern, I thought it would be really simple and it actually looks pretty cool for this. Um, you can definitely look up on YouTube other artists doing negative paintings. They're pretty good at them. It's just never something I've been specialized in. So I've kind of always avoided them until now, but, but you know what? I needed to do a last minute card for my husband and I thought this might be the perfect time to try it out with this simple pattern. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna paint a really light background of whatever color you want it to be. So in this sense, I use some cobalt turquoise light, some ultramarine, nope, not ultramarine, dioxazine violet or Windsor violet. Uh, I think I added a little bit of cobalt blue in there, but just basically lay down a really light wash of whatever color you want to use. Then you have to let it completely dry. Here I'm using my heat tool because it is the fastest way to dry it. Then you're gonna be doing some outlines of hearts. And the way it's a negative painting is that instead of painting the heart itself, you are painting the background around the heart. So that light wash of that base color really pops through. So I'm gonna be doing three initial hearts. And the thing I found the trickiest with this negative painting is getting the background wash around the hearts nice and like flat. I found because it dries really fast at times, especially because I just used my heat tool on my paper, my paper was pretty hot still, I could have waited, but I'm impatient, um, that it dried pretty fast. So keeping it even was a bit of a difficult challenge, but because we're going to be doing more negative layers, I didn't really care too much. And it still ended up looking cool. But this is what you want to do. You want to paint around these heart shapes that you kind of are sketching out with your paintbrush. And I'm just dropping some other colors in there. You don't have to use just one solid color. You can use a bunch. But one trick is that you want to use light washes so you can really build up those layers. If you go really dark on the second layer, that I just did, then you won't really be able to go darker for your next layer. So build up your layers with light washes so you can gradually go darker and then let it dry like I'm doing. Okay, so then once you are done letting it dry, you can work on your next layer. So another tip when doing this, because we are layering colors on top of each other, we're not using the same color. The first color I used was that kind of cobalt, tur cobalt, <laughs> cobalt turquoise light and a little bit of purple. It was just really light. Then I used um, a bit more of it and now I'm using my Windsor purple. I have a little bit of pink in there. Because I'm layering these colors, you also want to take into consideration what colors layer well on top of each other. So in this sense, I am going to um, recommend using an analogous palette. So analogous colors, in case you don't know, are the colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. So yellow, orange, red, and pink layer nicely on top of each other. You know if you mix any of those colors together, they're gonna look good. And when you're layering with a transparent medium, like watercolor, you're gonna see some of those colors underneath. So because they all mix well together, those are a good mix to have. In this case, I'm using pinks, purples, and blues. You know that if you mix or layer any of those colors together, they'll all mix nicely. What you want to avoid are mixing complementary or contrasting colors, which are purple and yellow, or red and green, or pink and green, and blue and orange. If you layer any of those colors on top of each other, you're gonna get a brown color. Unless brown is what you're going for, go for it. But if you want to avoid a muddy brown or gray color, you want to, you want to stick to analogous palettes or colors that mix or layer well together. So keep that in mind. So there's my next layer. See how it's a little patchy? Um, that's where I was really struggling because like I said, I was using the heat tool. Anytime you're using a heat tool, you're heating up your paper. If you don't want your paint to dry really, really fast, give it some time to cool down first. Um, and if you're impatient like me, you can just have it patchy. You know what? It's texture. It's watercolor. It looks great. Okay, so we let that dry and now we're working, I think this is my final layer. 
maybe not. I think I have two more layers. Um, and I think I'm going to layer some blue. So I started out with some cobalt blue, but then I just decided I wanted something a bit more intense like Windsor blue. So I decided to layer that on top. So just remember we're painting around these shapes. So any colors or any hearts that you want to remain purple, um, you're going to have to sketch them out and you're going to paint around them. And then you just kind of keep going with this pattern. So that's basically how you do a negative painting. Um, <laughs> those are all the tips I have. And I think that's about it. So I'm just going to let you kind of watch the rest of it with a little bit of music in fast motion. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I hope you guys have fun making this last minute Valentine's Day card and you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm.